Okay, we want to talk about performance issues and solutions for performance problems uh, for just a little bit here. Uh, the book talks, the book section on performance monitoring is actually quite good. Um, that's it's very much improved from uh, the last edition, as I recall. But um, but before we but before we do anything, I want to talk about performance in general because a lot of problems with performance, we get buried in the f uh, down with the trees before we actually look at the forest, and that's a mistake. Um, uh, one always has to start by looking at things at a very high level, and sometimes we cause performance problems that. Um, yes, we could solve them, but the truth is sometimes we just don't have to deal with them, period. So let's look at performance at a little bit of a higher level right now. The first question one needs to ask when somebody has a performance problem or somebody has any sort of problem is, well, um, do we need to be doing this? Uh, why are we doing this? Um, I sometimes find that people will want to do things like measure the volume of timber in a forest or something. So their first impulse is, hey, we've got lots of data, we've got lots of computers, we've got lots of this, we've got lots of that. If we take every tree in the forest, we know its diameter, we know its height, or we can send a couple foresters out to get that and, well, actually maybe maybe a team of a million foresters and they'll be back with that data in six months. Um, and um, and then we uh, from that we can calculate the volume of each tree and we've got the volume of wood we have in our forest. Um, um, or on the other hand, maybe it would be better just to take a random sample of two or three thousand trees, uh, do all those measurements on two or three thousand trees and uh, uh, calculate an estimate based on that and um, it may be just as accurate or maybe even more accurate uh, given the number of errors that we'll make with the general population census. Um, so uh, basically one of the things one does have to ask is if, if we've got a performance problem, one question to ask is whether we actually is to go back and look at what we're doing and see if we actually need to be doing what we're doing or if what we're proposing to do will actually solve the problem that we need to solve. You'd be surprised how many times people go off trying to solve this big, huge thing and they get done with it and then decide it didn't really do, it didn't really solve the problem that needed to be solved. Um, I know that sounds dumb, but it does happen. Uh, happens frequently. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk a little bit here as a software developer or a mathematician, um, as opposed to, you know, if you've got a program that's running slow and is running like a dog, and, and of course I'm talking maybe scientific programs here where you have pretty good control over the software because maybe you wrote the software. Um, um, or wrote at least parts of the software, um, but you're, it, it, it's just running too slow. Um, one of the things to ask is, well, maybe you wrote the thing in the wrong language. A lot of these web applications run terribly slow, and um, in some cases, you know, by changing the application from being um, written in Perl or Python, to being written in C or Fortran, you can speed things up by maybe a factor of 10 or so. Um, now, that's going to take you a lot more programming time because those it takes a lot longer, it usually takes a lot longer to write C or Fortran code than it does the equivalent Perl or Python. Um, so that is a factor in the cost and, and in the time to, to get it done. Um, but in some cases, that can be a huge savings. Um, also, I don't want to sound like I'm bad-mouthing Perl or Python because um, actually they've, um, they're designed so they're pretty efficient. They don't compare with um, the compiled languages like C, but 
they're still pretty darn good. Um, um, amazing compared with the interpreted languages we had in the early days of computing, which were dog slow. Um, um, the um, so sometimes by changing the software you're using, changing from one product to another, um, hopefully open source product, um, one, but maybe not. Um, one can change. One can um, basically improve your efficiency or get better performance out of your computers. Um, um, or by changing algorithms, of course, um, which is more at the mathematical level than the um, software level. But uh, that, that can also help you. And getting sparse, uh, and of course, the, the bottom line sometimes comes down to getting faster hardware or reconfiguring your hardware so it is faster, or getting specialty hardware. Um, in the old days, you know, not so long ago, we did everything with um, general purpose computers. Actually, we put hundreds of people on one general com purpose computer. And, uh, you know, uh, the old mainframes had the power of maybe a 386, and you'd have 100 users using the thing. Um, and then we went to a, a general purpose computer per person. Now we're going to how many computers per person. And a lot of these are specialty machines. And they may not have big, fancy CPUs, but the hardware is designed to satisfy a certain function. Um, and it does that very well just because it is um, specialized hardware. Um, and I have gone more and more to using specialized hardware myself. I used to almost always build my own um, firewalls from an old general purpose computer that I wasn't using anymore, running some sort of firewall distribution, like a Starl Security Linux or um, uh, Smoothwall Linux or um, uh, uh, TrustX or uh, uh, Untangle. Um, those are four distributions that work very well for a firewall. Um, floppy FW is another one. Um, and I've gone from that to basically using, you know, pretty much off-the-shelf firewalls that you can buy out of a, a, buy from a store for a modest price um, at the higher end, or you know, at the higher. Um, Small business end, it may be three, four hundred dollars, but that's still not bad. And um, and they're really just general purpose computers inside of them, uh, for the most part, with a little bit of specialty hardware. But it's all been put together as a nice package. It comes with nice user interface. They're easy to use. Um, and you know, I think they're a really good machine. I am just debating now. Of what to do about my home entertainment system. I've been reusing a general purpose computer that I do the streaming media on so I can go to Hulu and Netflix and, I don't know, YouTube, wherever, and, and get streaming video to play on my TV. It works pretty well. But I'm looking at some of these new little boxes for oh, $70, $100 that are just set up to fit on your internet and do streaming media. And I'm saying, you know, um, that might be a little more less troublesome and might work a little better. Maybe I should try one of those. Um, um, my telephone communications, I use a, a, one of these Vantage boxes. Um, Although I will admit, I've actually been moving away from, away from the specialized um, voice over IP boxes to just using Skype on my computers. So, um, so that that's that's a place where I'm moving in the opposite direction, away from specialized hardware, and I'm getting good performance with Skype. So you know, hey, that's uh, um, and it's a little more flexible than Vantage or or at least for my needs. So um, 
Another movement has been to adding hardware like uh, graphics cards that are very, very high performance hardware into your computer that can improve your performance for certain applications or um, such as doing computer gaming or high-end computer graphics or actually in the case of uh, GPUs, graphics processing units, uh, they're really fast. They're incredibly fast. And and people have actually started to figure out that, you know, if these do graphics so well, maybe they could be used for computations. And so at the supercomputing level, like the conference, supercomputing conference that I went to a few weeks ago, um, Huge numbers of people are now using GPUs to do large-scale numerical computations, and um, and they're kind of replacing the general-purpose CPUs, like the Intel CPUs. By they're not entirely replacing them, but they're augmenting them with large numbers of GPUs and um, uh, making things very very fast. So. There are sometimes adding specialty hardware will improve your performance. Certainly adding extra disk drives and stuff can improve your I.O. performance very much because uh, disks are, you know, they're only so fast. And if you add another disk and set them up as kind of a RAID array, y you can basically double your speed or improve your speed a lot by uh, by alternating your data going on and off different disk. OK, um, as we continue here, um, I have on my thing that we have people, uh, that there are people problems and with users and managers. This doesn't quite fit here, but um, it doesn't really, I, I don't think this is really a performance issue as much as just a general troubleshooting issue and just just a little thing that I'll mention that systems administrators are always dealing with people problems. Uh, being a systems administrator is a very people oriented job. Uh, you often find yourself kind of, at least I've often found myself in the middle trying to resolve problems between competing users where different users want to use the same resources or competing managers or or managers oppressing their 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 users or uh, um, or or users trying to get away with things they shouldn't be getting right away with and um, um, and that's part of handling performance too I mean that uh, and not so much the performance of the computers as the performance of the overall organization and the systems administrators really in the middle of that if you're working for a company that is very computer oriented um, next I'm going to have um, open up just a um, I'm going to go on to the next part of the video before long here where we'll, we'll actually talk just a little bit about the actual system monitoring commands. Okay, bye-bye.